In today's video, I unbox and review the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt diode laser. But before we get into today's video, just want to give a quick shout out to all of my lovely Patreon supporters. You guys are so awesome. And Bob the Beholder just made his picks for this past month's GGGGs. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this past month of January of 2024, Keith E. is receiving this printed and painted Strongberg building. Nam T. is receiving the Kraken Studios Battlegrounds Mini STLs. And Dennis M. is receiving $100 to go towards the Epic Conflict Crowdfunder. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page if you want to get in on this month's gratitude gifts as we will be populating that list as the month goes along. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to one of my friends, Jean-Francois, who currently has a Kickstarter up for a medieval Napoleonic farm that can be played for six millimeter or 15 millimeter games. This is pay what you want and the suggestion is to pay around $4. One of these pledges is going to be included as part of the GGGGs, but go ahead and use the link below to go to this Kickstarter and print out this really cool set that will work with 15 millimeter or lower war games. A while back, I did do a review video for the Creality Falcon 1, and that was a 10 watt diode laser. If you want to check out that video, go ahead and go here because in that video, I do a pretty good comparison between getting a diode laser versus getting a CO2 laser. The short of it is for most hobbyists, I think the diode laser is the way to go just because of its compact form factor that you don't have to take up a lot of space with a CO2 laser. But Creality was kind enough to go ahead and send me the second iteration of their Falcon 2, which I think makes improvements, not only the least of which they more than double the wattage from that 10 watts to now a 22 watt laser. But how easy is it to set up and how easy is it to get it running on Lightburn, which is my preferred software that I use for all of my lasering. So let's go ahead and dive into each one of these boxes and see what's inside. This is the air pump. So it looks like for the most part, this comes pretty much pre-assembled. The only thing that we need to put on here are these little feet in each of the corners. So there you go. That's about the quickest assembly for the frame out of all of them. And then this is the laser head. The tube for the air compressor goes on here, plugs into one of the slots here on the side. And that's pretty much it. This is all set up. I'm going to go ahead and open this up as I'm guessing this is the honeycomb plate. This comes with a protective metal sheet that goes on the bottom and then this goes over it like this. We'll go ahead and slide all of this underneath. There are more spacers if you need to lift it up higher. I'm going to grab one of the sample pieces of balsa wood that they had and also in this bag is a spacer to set the height of the laser to where it needs to be. And then let's go ahead and try installing the software. Before we do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this box. This is actually an enclosure. Taking a look at this, there's a lot of pieces. So I think I'm gonna skip, skip on this enclosure because I really have no intention of doing it, but it looks like it might be an option if you have a strong, powerful ventilation fan or system. But I'm gonna skip on this because I do all my lasering outside. So I have light burn up. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the machine. See if light burn auto detects. 
Alright, we have the air going. All right, it says it's setting up the device. All right, that looks like it automatically sensed it. Let's do GG. And let's just make this really minimal because we're just testing. So we'll put this at 10% power. Let's frame it. All right, let's let it go. And it is cutting. Go ahead and stop it just because I don't want to stink up the house. And looks good. Look how clean that cut is. So we'll go ahead and try some things outdoors. So here I am outside. It's in the middle of winter, but um, it's cutting away really good. I have my computer hooked up and check it out. And one of the things I really like about this model is that the cable management is excellent. I mean, check it out, the cable running along here, up here, like this, everything is so clean. With my other machine, the cable was sort of all over the place and actually would stop this carriage from moving over and it would actually mess with the um, movement of the laser head. But here, everything is super clean and this is cutting really well. You have a little window there just to protect your eyes. And it is looking so awesome. So I'm super happy with this machine. Even though it doesn't have a display here in the front, because I'm working at it from my computer, I don't necessarily need that, but you have that option. Putting in an SD card right here and being able to frame it out before you um, go ahead and laser and cut. So I'm very happy with this machine. I really also like the fact that here the air pump is plugged in and doesn't have a separate power supply but is powered through this which is awesome because there's only just this power supply plugged in right now and that's all you really need. And the other cool thing is it does have a flame sensor inside and will automatically shut off but because you have this tube of air going through there and blowing it out I'm not too worried about um, any flare-ups happening so overall just really impressed with this machine all right so I've had a few days to try out the machine and make a couple of projects and I do have to say I really like this machine a lot which in some ways um, I was hoping I didn't because I was going to make this one of the gratitude gifts. But like my previous laser, the Algo laser, um, I'm actually going to be putting that up for one of the gratitude gifts and giving that one away because this one I like better than the Algo laser. And the Algo laser replaced the X tool. So successively, as I'm receiving these to review, I'm finding that I like uh, these improvements over the previous ones. And because of that, I'm going to be keeping this machine and going to be having one of the gratitude gifts for this month of February 2024 be the Algo Laser 22 watt. Now, here are some of the projects that I did. Check out the engraving that is on this board. This keeps a wife happy because I can engrave uh, personalized gifts to be able to give away to family and friends. And this is just a design I found online. Uh, I think it looks awesome. I experimented with a number of terrain files. I really haven't made much MDF terrain, but as you can see here, I'm gonna come out with a future video showcasing sci-fi terrain for miniature wargaming and this I think is super cool. It incorporates a can to be used as a chem tank. So I'm going to be painting this up and then as well I have a full set that I'm going to be making uh, that is going to be super fast to paint up. So I'm, again please subscribe because I'm going to come out with future videos showcasing this different kinds of terrain uh, typically I do 3D printed terrain, but using a laser is much, much, much faster. So if you have an upcoming tournament 
and you need to fill out a whole game table of terrain, I think laser cutting is the way to go with this three millimeter MDF board. I did do a test like I do with most of my lasers just to see what the settings are and is pretty much the same as my other 22 watt laser as well as the engraving speed and power that I use. So overall, I think this is a great machine. It definitely does receive the Gaming Geek stamp of approval. I do think that this machine has a lot of quality of life features that I do prefer. I mean, again, the cable management I think is awesome. The fact that it's pretty much put together, all you have to do is to stick this uh, laser head onto the machine, which is super easy as well. I love the integrated and powered air assist and the fact that it is plug and play didn't have to upload any software just lightburn was able to recognize it right away and was able to go boom with no effort at all so because of all of that this is definitely the machine that i'm going to be keeping and use the link below to go to my patreon page if you want to have a chance in receiving that algo laser thanks to creality for sending this to me for review as well as the enclosure which i didn't end up using again i think it produces so much smoke i just much rather would take it outside and with these dial lasers they are so light that it's not a big deal taking it into your garage or outside so that you don't have to really worry about venting whereas with the Large CO2 lasers, obviously it's too big and heavy to be carrying back and forth. So this is a perfect solution, I think for the hobbyist. I think it's fantastic. These diode lasers have come a long way and I think 22 watt is actually plenty. They do have a 40 watt version of this, but for hobbying, I think 22 watt is plenty. Even with thicker stock, you can cut through it with multiple passes. So this is a great machine. Go ahead and use the links that I provide below to make purchases as that helps me out a lot. And hit the like button and again, subscribe if you haven't done so already. So happy lasering, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.